already angered by the American presence in the Middle East, an Islamic terrorist group takes the unprecedented action of exploding a bomb on American soil. On February 26, 1993, an Egyptian terrorist group sets off a car bomb in the second level of the Vista Hotel in the World Trade Center complex. It's a multi-part bomb containing gunpowder, nitroglycerin, compressed hydrogen, and 1,500 pounds of an explosive paste. The explosion is tremendous, leveling everything on the second floor and doing extensive damage to floors above and below it. Frightened workers and tourists stumble out of the devastation. Emergency crews rush to the scene to put out the resulting fire and give aid to the injured. They assess the damage to the structure and make their way to some victims still trapped inside the building. In the end, emergency crews find six dead near the blast zone. The two main towers of the complex have over a hundred floors each, containing over a hundred thousand people. Had they fallen, the effect would have been catastrophic. Oddly enough, the worst bombing on American soil is not an act of foreign terrorism. It's committed by Americans themselves who oppose the federal government. Barely two years after the bombing in New York, a two-ton bomb in a moving van is detonated outside the federal building in Oklahoma City. The results are even more catastrophic. The face of the nine-story building is decimated. Rescue crews work feverishly with heavy equipment to get the survivors trapped in the rubble. But as the terrorists intend, the death toll is high. 169 people, including children, are killed by falling debris and glass shards blasted in by the explosion. The bomber, Timothy McVeigh, is eventually arrested, tried, and sentenced to death. Despite terrorism and the high cost of war, the trend toward international police action continues. In 1991, President Clinton and the UN are faced with a difficult situation in Bosnia-Herzegovina. In Bosnia itself, those of you who are going will be joined by other new friends, Polish and Czech combat battalions, Hungarian engineering corps, soldiers from the Baltic states, and a Russian brigade. When your mission is completed, all of you will be able to look back at this new partnership with former adversaries and say, we made history. We did something that really mattered. The collapse of communist control in Yugoslavia has set off a power struggle within. Neighboring provinces, defined by different religions and ethnicities, begin to mobilize their armies against each other. Their goal is to annex areas populated by their countrymen and to expel all others. By 1992, the situation has stabilized in most regions. But when the ethnically diverse province of Bosnia-Herzegovina claims independence, the whole process begins again. A small UN peacekeeping force is sent in to stop the bloodshed, but there's little they can do without using force. The Serbs continue to bomb homes, killing and terrorizing the Albanians. By 1996, there are 2.1 million Albanian refugees scattered throughout Eastern Europe. And hundreds of thousands are dead. Finally, an international force known as IFOR is mobilized to halt the Serb forces. 
American troops play a large role in this operation called joint venture. The Serbian troops are slowly subdued, and their ability to wage war is diminished as I-4 troops seize weapons and begin to restore order. But the process is slow, and despite the heavy military presence, the Serbs are reluctant to cease their campaign of ethnic cleansing against the Muslim Albanians. Finally, airstrikes are ordered against the Serbs. The heavy pressure finally forces the Serbs to declare a ceasefire. The continued presence of I-4 troops provides stability and enforces the terms of the ceasefire. 